Take number 69. J just kidding, it's only one take, but yeah, I'm stupid. Welcome back, and today we're reacting to another Kurtzkazogd video. Today we're reacting to Let's Travel to the Most Extreme Place in the Universe, 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 Universe. Why do I do these stupid things? <laughs> Be sure to support the original content creator and make sure you watch the original video. Let's hop right into it. The universe is pretty big and very strange. It is pretty big. Hundreds of billions of galaxies with sextillions of stars and planets. And in the middle of it all, there's Earth. We are so ridiculously us. small. But as enormous as the universe seems looking up, it seems to get even larger when you start looking down. You are towering over worlds within worlds within worlds. I actually think I read somewhere that the universe scales down in relation to us more than it scales up. At least as far as we can observe. I don't remember the numbers, but roughly speaking, it was like the universe scales up to 10 to the 30 second power bigger than us in terms of structures that exist and it scales down to like 10 to the negative 37th or something similar to that which is a huge huge difference each in plain sight and yet hidden from your experience let's go on a journey we'll start in a park about a thousand meters long enough for a 15 minute walk every time we click this magic button ah my old nemesis walks Please slip into this magic science suit so you don't die and can still see. <laughs> a magic science suit. Let's go. I mean, magic is just science that isn't quite understood yet. Or trickery. The miniature realm. You are the size of a grain of sand just two millimeters high, standing on a blade of grass that seems as tall as an eight-story building to you. A square meter of lawn is now a dense metropolitan area with 100,000 blades or two Manhattans worth of grass towers. Wow, new, that's insane. The park that you could quickly stroll through before is now the size of France. Crossing it would take so it was a 15 minute walk before up to a week. Sized humans loom over you, four times taller than the M Empire State Building, their steps falling from horizon to horizon. A bee the size of a helicopter lands near you making the ground shake as its hairy carapace vibrates with each wing beat. Perspective is just insane. Barely able to move because the air is so gooey. The air is thicker because you're so small. That's ridiculous. Was barely noticeable. But as you're now a thousand times smaller, it's as if the air has become a thousand times denser. It feels like you're moving through honey. Flying insects like bees use this to their advantage. Their wings are not made for gliding, but like paddles that roam through the air. Scaled up to human size, the bee would outrun a Concorde jet, except it couldn't even take off because it would be too heavy for its wings. And how would it outrun a Concorde jet? The microscopic realm. You've I suppose the they mean if it could fly, right? If the air resistance was the same. The size of an e. coli bacteria. From your new tiny perspective, the park you started in is now a million kilometers wide to you. If you walked non-stop, it would take some 25 years to cross it. It's That is so much stuff. The universe is so big. Like, ridiculously big. And that's at our scale. It's even big at the galactic scale. Think of how big the universe is to the tiniest thing that there is. Think, uh, I know an atom's not the smallest thing. Think of how big, as a scale, the universe as a whole, or even the observable universe is compared to a single atom. Hard to grasp just how huge the microscopic world is to its tiny inhabitants. The giant bee that was close a moment ago is now the size of Mount Everest, towering high into the sky, but alive, humming, and vibrating. Wow. The air here feels almost solid to you. On the human scale, it would be as viscous as lava, extremely hard to push through. The blade of grass now expands so far you can't see its edges, stretching as wide as Paris would to a regular-sized human. And that's you one blade of grass. Like dried up riverbeds, dead patches like deserts, and giant craters left behind. Of which there was a hundred thousand. But if you look closely, in the square meter. Terrain. These are rows of individual cells, each the size of a house with hard exteriors like glass shells. 
Every few cells, there are huge openings called stomata, like mouths, sucking in air and blowing out oxygen. Suddenly, the gigantic bee begins to move. A construct made of rigid pieces. And then we wonder why we can't simulate this stuff, right? I mean, there's just so much information in the tiniest amount of space. I know that there's like cheats and shortcuts we can use, but it's mind blowing. But instead of feeling a strong punch, you just get sucked in. to swim, but the water feels thick and sticky. That was a really weird noise. Air molecules are free spirits, while water molecules act more like social creatures that group together whenever possible. They pull on each other and create a relatively strong cohesive force that traps you. Huh. You can't help it, but you're still moving, tumbling in all directions, helplessly dragged along by an invisible current. So basically you have no power over where you're going. Of thousands of microorganisms. They take on many forms. Viruses the size of tennis balls float around you aimlessly. Others, like Euglena oxyuris cells, pass you like freight trains. How big is the park now Most compared to you? Like oily jellyfish the size of a car, sporting long tentacles that act like supercharged propellers. Despite the water holding onto them like glue, some move hundreds of body lengths per second, equivalent to a person shoveling through mud <laughs> at over 600 kilometers an hour. However, Physics is weird. So little, and water is so viscous that they basically have no inertia. There is no gliding on this scale. The result is a weird jerky motion that's hard to keep track of. Maybe we can learn more about this strange motion if we go even deeper. The Jeez. molecule realm. You've become the size of a molecule, just under two nanometers wide. At your new tiny scale, the droplet now seems as big as the moon to a regular human. The blade of grass it rests on could reach from the tip of Alaska to the end of Australia. And the park is now all the size of the solar system. But instead of mostly empty space, it is filled with stuff. Wow. Everywhere you look, there are innumerable amounts of molecules and atoms. The rigid walls of the grass cells... This is just mind-blowing stuff. Vibrating, I know I've said it a couple energy. times, but it's just... The we can't grasp this. nearly a sextillion water molecules that are all in motion. Water is actually a storm of H2O molecules smashing into each other hundreds of trillions of times a second. Each of them is moving at speeds of around 2,300 kilometers an hour and bombard their surroundings mercilessly, sending small objects hurtling in all directions this is the source of the invisible current that you noticed when you were a thousand times larger oh, okay scaling this speed up to the human scale is impossible as a human size would it be faster than light two thousand times ah. faster than the two thousand times Jeez. Curious motion comes from heat. Heat is a bit abstract at our human scale, where you touch something and get a vague sense of whether it's hot or cold. This is how much energy and vibrations heat is. a molecule has, right? Of molecules, vibrating, twisting, and colliding as if they're inside a furious bullpit. Yeah, so how do you these define heat, heat at this scale? They move more slowly and collide less often. When they gain heat, they speed up and smash together with renewed fervor. Temperature is basically the measure of the average speed of these fantastic dancers performing all day. Suddenly, a molecule hits you especially hard, and you're catapulted out of the water droplet into the air again. And here, you see something unexpected. The stuff between the air molecules. Nothing. Between the molecules that make up the air, there is a vacuum. On average, a molecule in the air travels for about 60 nanometers, which is about the length of a hockey rink if it were the size of a human. <laughs> if we were to compress all the molecules and atoms buzzing around in the room you're watching this in, they would only fill about 0.1% of its volume. 99.9% .9 of the space around you is a vacuum. You just don't notice it. Which also means that every time you take a breath, you breathe in mostly nothing with a few atoms. That 0.1% is That's really important micro. though. At your size of under two picometers, scale starts to lose its meaning. Picometer a human would be nearly two billion kilometers tall relative to you, so large they could stretch their arms from the sun to Saturn. An atomic nucleus would be the size of a grain of sand you could hold on the tip of your finger. Wait, wait, so at this scale, a human could reach from the sun to Saturn, did they say? And at that scale, you scale down to what was it, two picometers. The nucleus is still small enough to just barely fit on your finger. What? Cue an incoming existential crisis. <laughs> that grain holds 99.97% of the atom's mass. 
The rest, a sphere of influence about as large as the Eiffel Tower from your perspective, is filled with an electron cloud. That's basically all the places where electrons might be at any given moment in time. Reality is messed electrons up. Electrons are shapeshifters that morph around outside a nucleus, creating a new and vibrating mess of different shapes with every new moment. Unlike the graceful motion of planets, the atomic nuclei are chaotic blurs. They bulge, roll, quiver, and breathe. They hold back the same energy that powers nuclear bombs, and it doesn't let them sit still. They twist and vibrate sextillions of times a second. Wow. It's time to end our journey and return to... What are you doing? <laughs> Stop it. Now you done messed up, bird. The smallest place... Okay, what's this? It's got to be quantum realm, right? ...and unreality. The scale here is the Planck length, which is the distance light travels in a Planck time. Planck time is the time it takes light to travel a Planck length. Hmm, okay. None of our models of the universe make sense at scales smaller than this, so... It's the smallest section of measurement that has any meaning to us, and measuring any smaller than that just has no meaning whatsoever, because we couldn't tell the difference between one unit and the other side by side. That's my understanding of it. So for now, this is it. We think that down here... The bird's still trying to press the button? Existence and then spontaneously disappear, creating a quantum foam of unimaginable energy. Can we go even smaller? We don't know. It's time to return. Oh, are we going to get a journey here? You should have kept on going to like the galactic scale. That would have been really cool. That was already really cool. But if you look down into the tiny and extremely tiny, the universe seems even larger and even stranger. In the end, the perfect place might be where you are right now. Not too big, not too small. It's true. I can't imagine picturing intelligent life any smaller than us. At least not by any meaningful difference. What a great video this was. I really enjoyed it and their visualizations are just always spot on. You know, Kurtz Kazag has the perfect mix of including a bunch of information, but they dumb it down enough, and I don't mean that in an insulting way, but you know, they do. They simplify it enough that most people can watch their videos and come out of it with something. You don't need a bachelor's degree or a master's degree in a scientific field to follow along. Their animations, the voice, everything's spot on. Love these guys. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And if you like this, please drop me a like. It really helps more than you could know. If you want to see more content like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thank you and have yourself a wonderful day.